start of the year. Questions for you guys? Coach, let's just start with how productive was the bye week for you guys from a health standpoint and, you know, just correcting those little things that you want to – you know, everybody thinks, you know, it's just physical health, but it's mental health, too. You know, a week before is the first week of class here, and that's stressful enough on any student. Then you add NCAA athletics, Division One level, to it. You know, that's a stressful week. So uh, they got through that week. We didn't play well, but then we had a week off, and I thought that that was a great week from the mental standpoint as well as the physical standpoint for uh, giving our players the opportunity to regroup and get their, their bodies right and their minds right and make a push for the last seven games. Health-wise, Deontay, and just run down. Uh, Deontay will probably be day to day. I mean, he did a little bit this morning, uh, not a ton. And the hope would be that we could play him some to get him back in the swing of things Saturday, but we're not going to force the issue. Uh, probably the exact same thing with uh, um, Nico Molino. Uh, we'd probably like to get him some. He scrimmaged with the freshman on last Thursday and got 10 plays in just to get in the flow of things and feel the bangs and things like that. Uh, so hopefully uh, he can give us X amount of plays maybe this Saturday. And then the, Gavin Cooper is just day to day and just wait and see whether he can or he can't. And uh, Gavin's had his space. He's done a great job physically himself. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's one of those injuries, you know, that he wants to feel good and we want him to feel good so he can play like Gavin Cooper can play. So he's still a huge question mark. Do you still have like a walking boot or whatever? Is that all? No, he can walk now. That, that's a start. But unfortunately, <laughs> we just can't walk and make sacks in this league. So until he can play like Gavin Cooper can play, or at least, you know, a high percentage of what Gavin Cooper can do, then our de deal would be to wait and let's see if we can get him closer to 100% to win uh, whenever that might be, week 8, 9, or 10. That's all we know about Central Oklahoma Division Two. Talk to us more about this team. Well, you know, I mean, you know, I, and I think a lot of the, the Cal Poly people, we don't really remember the Division Two days as well, maybe as we should. There were some great Cal Poly Division Two teams here uh, back in the '80s, and uh, including the national championship team. And uh, you know, the one thing that's changed a lot over the years is the academic standards for Division One and Division Two. And it's, you know, academically, it's a lot easier to get a Division Two scholarship than it is to get a Division One scholarship. So uh, they do a tremendous job recruiting X amount of California junior college players that can not predict to be Division One athletes that, that, that probably are Division One athletically but just uh, from a scholastic standpoint out there and they have four or five guys kind of guys like that in their program and then they surround them with a lot of good southwest high school football players and you make that combination and you usually have a pretty good football team so uh, even though they're one and four they played two or three nationally ranked teams including north alabama who's an outstanding football team and uh, competed well they just hadn't won and i think that uh, big win for them saturday gives them the opportunity to feel like they can come here and probably compete and maybe beat us i mean they're going to be athletically at the skill positions as good as we are they more of a running team, passing. Just Depends what you count screens as. <laughs> Is that a run or a pass? Nowadays, a lot of people use a screen game as their run game. Uh, but they have a tremendous running back who ran for 225 yards this past week, and he hadn't run for that prior. Let's put it that way. And I think he's probably maybe their best football player all the way around on the offensive side of the ball. So uh, we're going to have to take care of the run game. Uh, but they've been averaging close to 50-some-odd throws a game and 20-some-odd runs. So they're averaging 75 plays a game, too, which uh, is a, a strong pace. And they're a no-huddle team, which we've had our share of so far, too. So uh, I would say they, they want to throw it, but the screen game and getting the ball to number 21 in a lot of different ways is a part of their package. I know every week you guys want to get better. Every day you want to get better at practice. What are you guys focusing on? particularly this week, to, to get better? Well, last week, a lot of our focus was on some of the things that we were, made some mistakes. We worked hard on third down defense and uh, thought we did some good things there. We worked hard on some technique things that maybe we were lapsing a little bit in as far as pass rush things on the defensive side of the ball. On the offensive side of the ball, there's no question that we're continuing to work on the perimeter part of our football game. And I think the harder we work at that, uh, the better that will become, which will make us even probably a higher percentage pass team as well. So those are kind of the emphasis. But once we get to game week, it's on the opponent. And Central Oklahoma is our next opponent, so we're working hard to uh, make sure that we're ready to play our best game of the year this Saturday night. Hey, Coach, we always ask this of you guys when you play FBS schools, which we've done mm -hmm. twice this year. Um, we ask, you know, how is it preparing? You know, how is the mental aspect uh, getting up for the game, I guess? So conversely, what's it like when you're playing a team below you? Because, I mean, you're always the, the underdog when you go up against the, the big guys, but now you're the decided favorite. So what's well, I think in having two, two playing up against two FBS opponents this year that both were bowl teams, you see how you're supposed to play when you are a team that's, that's favored. And I think they, San Diego State and Northern Illinois, although we played with them at times, both did what they were supposed to in order to win the game and, and put the game, make it a convincing win for themselves. And I think that from our standpoint, our players adopted that phrase, you know, faceless opponent. And if we truly believe it, it really doesn't matter who we're playing. It's how we play and how we prepare mentally. And we preach that on a daily basis. I think coaches have done that for years about, you know, 
forget about who you're playing and take care of how you play. And if we take care of how we play, I think that good things can happen for us the rest of the year. I expect us to be back home hungry for a win. We're, shoot, we're one and three. Regardless of who we played, how difficult the schedule was and all that stuff, we don't play games to lose. And we're one and three, and we need to move forward, and we need to win this Saturday, regardless of who we're playing. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you about. The team right now, just having one win, I mean, how hungry is this team to, to, to get a win no matter who the opponent is? Well, as the head football coach, I would like to say we're extremely hungry. I know that uh, I don't like losing, and our coaches don't like losing, and I know our players don't like losing, but we're going to find out as, a, as a, the entire football program, the entire football team, how important winning is Saturday night. We need to win. I don't care. Really, I mean, I can say it. I, you know, I want, do I want to win convincingly? Do I want to play a perfect game? Heck, yeah, I do. I want to win, though. Bottom line is I want to make sure Saturday night at 7-15 that we're 2-3. and three. And there's a lot of guys on this team that obviously play, you know, against the Humboldt State team. Um, that I think you guys were down at halftime in that game. So there's certainly nothing given for you guys this Saturday. Are you certainly reminding the guys that you're going to have to play and play well? well? I definitely reminded our coaches of that. Let's put it that way. So, you know, the bottom line thing, again, you know, Humboldt State's an extremely well-coached team. They recruit the state of California. They have a good football players on their team, and their guys are hungry to win too. And they played extremely well against us a year ago. So I, this team, probably a little bit more athletic than that team. So that can cause us some problems as well. So we must be ready. We need to play well. And I've been on the other side of the fence as a Division II program playing up. And unfortunately, from where I am now, we won a lot of those games. They're not fun games to prepare for. They're going to be good. And, and no disrespect to the, the Division II level or whatever, but I mean, would you, as long as you're here, I mean, are, are we hoping this is the last Division II team that we're going to face here uh, as, at Cal Poly? Don and I just had that conversation this morning. I mean, it, you know, really for us and for what we did when the, when the decision was made to go FCS, 1AA, whatever you want to call it, year, you know, 15 years ago, whenever it was exactly, uh, the bottom line thing, we did it because we did not want to be Division II, and we want our athletic program to be Division I. And in order to do that, football had to play at the level we were playing at. And I think that uh, there's no reason for us to look back or go back any longer. Now, especially being in the big sky, all we need is three extra games a year, sometimes four because you can play 12. Uh, but if you look at the schedule for the future, and I think there's a press release on that tomorrow, uh, we're, we're moving in the right direction about who we're going to play, and we feel good and strong that uh, that's the best thing for us is to move forward and not backwards on who we're playing. And my last question, that we, we, you know, we really haven't seen a lot of you uh, this year, just one home game. I mean, how nice is it that it's kind of home heavy here uh, in the last six games of the year? That's a, I like that saying, home heavy, right now, because, you know, obviously Cal Poly has played well in the past here, and we want to continue to play well at home. And, you know, if you look at the way we played uh, against South Dakota State, who's proven to be not a bad team, I mean, they're not winning either, but they're playing extremely competitive in a very competitive conference, uh, and even has more votes than we have, and others receiving votes, you know. And uh, the way we played at home, and the 11,000 people and the 4,000 students, got to be fired up to be home, and hopefully everybody's fired up to see us play again, and we hope to put on another great show like we did two Saturdays ago.